question now is that the amendments be agreed to. I call the member for Goldstone. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Madam Deputy Speaker, I rise to speak on Appropriation Bill No. 1, 2012-13 and related bills. The fact is that this budget, this federal budget, has sunk like a stone. In fact, uh, the experience in my, in my electorate office and uh, from what I gather in discussions with so many of my colleagues, there's virtually no contact, no phone calls, no attempt to get detail. Now, this is most unusual, irrespective of how budgets are received or who gives the budget, either side of the chamber, what you'd normally expect is to get a reasonable number of calls coming to your office, either to complain or to congratulate, or at the very least to seek detail of different programs. This year, silence. This year, silence. Silence because this, this budget has sunk like a stone. People have stopped listening. People, Madam Deputy Speaker, have stopped listening to this government. They have, they have no confidence that anyone is in fact running the show. And they have no confidence in this Treasurer, in his ability to bring down a, a budget that is in any way believable or in any way competent. Australians simply don't find this budget believable. They heard that the deficit for this budget, they heard not, not more than not more than 18 months ago, the first forecast on the deficit for this budget was to be $12 billion. Then they heard it in the budget last year a forecast of $23 billion. Then they heard it towards the end of last year, in November, in the mid-year economic statement, that the budget deficit would be $37 billion. And then they, they hear, this time round, when the budget is actually given, that it's $44 billion, and at a time when the year still had a couple of months to go. Madam Deputy Speaker, no wonder people do not find this budget believable. No wonder they've taken absolutely no notice of what has been said by the Treasurer and the government. Why would they therefore believe a surplus forecast? Why would they believe in a $26 billion turnaround and a surplus forecast. They've heard the spin before, again and again, and apart from the last four minutes on IBD and crony disease, the member for Oxley, we've just heard it again, the spin from the member for Oxley. But people have been bludgeoned into reality by the outcomes. Not the spin, the outcomes. They've been disheartened, they've been let down so often. They're sick of it, Madam De Deputy Speaker. They're sick of the cute words, the explanations, the endless forecasts which never are delivered. We hear this Treasurer saying, bemoaning the fact that he's had to, he's had to deal with a $150 billion write down in the budget, as though someone came along and put an extra burden on him. But they were his forecasts from previous budgets that were overstated, which everyone said were overstated. These Pollyanna forecasts, Pollyanna forecasts from previous, from previous budgets. And then he comes in here with, with shoulders stooped, complaining of the fact, complaining of the fact, complaining of the fact that he has got to write down $150 billion. Well, poor Wayne, poor Treasurer, poor Treasurer, $150 billion. There are things that he forecast, and then when the forecasts weren't realised, he gets it on one side, he helps sell a budget with a sh shonky forecast, and then he gets it on the other side by saying he had to deal with the write-down of $150 billion of, of uh, monies that were not realised. This is just an example of the type of spin that everyone has to put up with. It is the type of spin that has made people so cynical so distrustful, so confused and so upset about the way in which this government is running the affairs of state. It is why there is a crisis of confidence in this country. 
It's why people are saving at a level they've never saved at before. 12 per cent for the last 12 months. Nearly $90 billion not spent that normally would be spent. No wonder retail is on its knees. All of the money that's sitting on balance sheets of companies not being invested. Go out and talk to them. And they all say, why would I invest? I've got no idea who's running this show. Is anyone up there who's got any ideas? Anyone up there who's got any ideas? Anyone who's got any ideas? Madam Deputy Speaker, I have to put up with this nonsense on the other side here. Madam Deputy Speaker, this budget is a discredited budget, a totally discredited. Just let me make a couple of quotes. The Chief of the Certified Practicing Accountants, Alex Malley, says Australia desperately needs a vision and that was not achieved in the budget. And I quote, accounting chicanery was the winner tonight, he said at the end of the budget. On the same e evening, respected economic commentator Alan Kohler said, and I quote, this is at its core a big taxing, big spending budget, including a big increase in welfare. It is the budget of an unpopular government approaching an election, not one that's tightening the belt. End of quote. Madam Deputy Speaker, he's nailed it. You wouldn't think, though, from the presentation and the, the, the verbiage about the budget coming from the other side of the chamber. This budget is a flight of fancy. You have to look no further than the revenue forecast. There's a revenue forecast of 11.8 per cent. The Treasurer is setting himself up again for an opportunity to bemoan the outcome next year by overstating the forecast this year once again. The revenue forecast is 11.8 per cent. This can't happen. This physically can't happen, won't happen. The long-term average through good years is 8 per cent. Madam Deputy Speaker, the Australian dollar, the coal price, resource share prices, they're all forward indicators and they're all heading south, every one of them. Add to this the new socialist governments in Europe, the recent developments in the last week or two in Spain and Greece, unemployment on the up again in the United States, and we are not going to see a 12 per cent increase in revenue. It simply won't happen. We will be a long way south of that, and this government knows it. It is again an exercise in deception. It's, a, it's an exercise designed to fool people long enough to get through a budget and to seek to put a, a gloss on what are demonstrably failed results. Madam Deputy Speaker, the, the Treasurer keeps talking about Australia being well ahead of the rest of the developed world. Well, of course, our competitors are in the main not in the developed world, but put that aside. Um, what we do see is the IMF just a couple of weeks ago where they stated that six developed countries are now back in structural surplus. Six developed countries. This is the yardstick that the Treasurer keeps wanting to refer to. And yet they still referred to Australia being in structural deficit. In other words, we are wasting the, we are wasting the mining boom. The rivers of gold are being used to fund excessive payments. That's what a structural deficit means. And if the rivers of gold come off 20 or 30 per cent, we're in deep trouble. We're back in deficits without doing anything else, without doing another, another thing. We're back in deficits. And, Madam Deputy Speaker, this budget is a confused budget. On the one hand, we heard for weeks that it was going to be a really tough budget. By goodness, this was going to be tough. This was going to really shake the, this was going to shake the bones of all those people who like to spend, spend, spend. Well, of course, we get to the night we got to actually a couple of weeks before when the Prime Minister came back into the country and thought she was being set up by the Treasurer. And then we started to hear of uh, endless handouts, vote buying exercise. Of course, they're all paid for by borrowed funds. We hear this, we hear this again and again on the other side of the chamber in defence of the budget about all the spending initiatives that they've got, who they're helping. Well, they're helping people People aren't deluded by this. They are worried by the fact that you're helping them with more borrowed money. That's not help. That's just deferred pain. That just means someone further down the track was going to require repayment of that money. It is, again, spin over substance, 
and we're seeing the outcome of it. The $800 checks, all borrowed money, every penny of it, $100 million a day. They say they're helping small business. They're in the market every day for $100 million each day, forcing small business out of the market. They can't get money to maintain the doors on their business open to refinance their, their mortgages, nor can they get loans at any sort of reasonable interest rate because this government's been borrowing $100 million a day now for years. For three years, $100 million a day, and they say they're, they're interested and they're supportive of small business. It's a joke, Madam Deputy Speaker. Madam Deputy Speaker, not only that, they've got supposedly a tough budget, but end up with all these handouts, but it's also confusion and broken promises as a budget that actively discourages investment by Australian-based companies and foreign investors. They claim that this shonky surplus is going to give great confidence and, and comfort to business, and it will turn the, turn, the, turn the tables on all sorts of problems faced by businesses outside of the mining sector. And yet they, in the same breath, drop a long-standing promise to reduce company tax. And, of course, there was nothing on deregulation. It is a budget that actu actively discourages investment. And, of course, when you look to foreign investors, one little reported measure in the budget that demonstrates this government just doesn't get it and, that, and was not lost in the business sector is the doubling of the withholding tax on distributions from managed investment trusts for overseas investors. At a time when we've got the biggest carbon tax in the world being introduced, we've got a mining tax which no one else has got, and that's becoming a huge sovereign risk issue in other parts of the world for investors. Now we've got a withholding tax, which is one of the few things that they could lay claim to have done in a very successful and promising way. Just four years ago, the Assistant Treasurer put out a statement after the budget announcement that part of its a commitment to establish Australia as a regional financial hub, the Rudd government was to act to dramatically improve the competitiveness of the Australian managed funds industry. It announced on the budget that it would substantially reduce the level of withholding tax from a non-final rate of 30 per cent to a final rate of 7.5 per cent. They then went on, these arrangements will make Australia's withholding tax rate one of the most competitive in the world and provide a significant boost to Australia's ability to compete globally. Madam Deputy Speaker, they were on the money. We supported this initiative. It was a very sensible thing. They got out in front of the world and it produced results, billions of dollars of results. It went from one billion in the, MI, in the MIT to four billion. Then when it came down to seven and a half percent, it went to five and a half billion. Five and a half billion dollars came in here, got invested in infrastructure that we hear being talked about endlessly, but what happened? On budget night, they reversed it, back up to 15 per cent. Of course, no consultation, no warning whatsoever. What do you think this does to people in New York and London and other places who are looking to put billions of dollars here? It spells sovereign risk. It spells a government that's got the shakes. It spells a government that doesn't know where it's going. It spells, it spells great big question marks over Australia as a destiny for stable, stable and accountable government. None of this is happening, and these are the sorts of signals. It's not only that, it's retrospective. So companies and big funds that have put billions in here, sunk them into infrastructure projects and did all their numbers on 7.5 per cent withholding tax and they're going to be slugged 15 per cent. Do you think they're going to come back with money to get a, a measly $260 million for this treasurer to be able to, to pull out a shonky, a shonky surplus? They've probably sacrificed tens of billions of dollars over the next 10 or 20 years by this move. It is such a pathetic thing for this government to do, and then they stand up and say they, they understand and they've got the interest of business at heart. Madam Deputy Speaker, this is a budget with the, the debt issue, this increase in debt from 250 billion to 300 billion debt ceiling. It is so misleading. Uh, that was hidden. It's a budget of deception by omission. It's got the biggest carbon tax in, in the world with not one word of explanation in those inches and inches of budget papers about how this thing will work 
and yet it's going to put such an enormous burden on everybody in the country. Madam Deputy Speaker, this is a budget which will only compound the crisis of confidence currently running rampant within Order. Australian households and, and business. Time has expired. The